Okay, this is the fourth part of the Nanoloop 2.3 tutorial series. Um, in this part, we're going to look at the noise channel. Um, the noise channel is a little bit different to the RL and S channels. Um, if you press select, move over the note, um, place down a few notes, you can probably see that they're all the same. If you hold down B, press up and down, ooh, sorry, I just my game away there press up and down, you can't actually change anything. Um, it's always the same sound. Press select again, um, move over the envelope, uh, sorry, the amplitude envelope, press up, um, gets louder, press down, gets quieter, press left, shorter, right, gets louder. Um, that works basically the same. Um, also, if you move over the panning option, this works the same as well. Um, the real difference that the noise channel has is in the filter section. Um, so I've got a slightly weird LFO set up there by those things. Let's move that back down to neutral. Um, so move over the filter section. If you move to the right, holding down A again, You can see a change in the quality of the sound, but you will probably notice you can only move four steps to the right. Um, I didn't know what was happening here, so I actually posted on the Nanoloop forums, and Oliver, the creator, got back to me very quickly, which is yet another reason to spend time on the Nanoloop forums and explain what's happening. Um, this is actually pitching down the uh, pitching down the noise, so it's effectively pitching it down an octave with each step to the right little bit lower, a little bit lower, a little bit lower. Um, the rest, so you can't alter the pulse width modulation on noise because pulse width modulation only works on square waves. This is sampling the noise down an octave, I guess. Um, the rest of the filter section works fairly similarly. Um, if you press up and down, alters the cutoff. Um, if you press start, you will change to a band pass filter, which again, you can sample down, you can move to a harsher sound, and move to a kind of smoother type of noise. Um, it might not look like there's a lot that you can do with the noise channel because you can't change the notes, but it really is quite versatile. You can get an awful lot of different types of sound out of it. Um, but it really comes into its own when you kind of mix the different things together. Um, let's change back to low pass here. Um, the LFO works exactly the same as it does in the S channel. Um, again, sounds perhaps a little odd. So here you can see it moving very quickly, moving more slowly. Here the filter cutoff's going up and down very, very quickly. Here it moves down, it moves down more slowly. Um, the filter cutoff affects the noise very, very differently to the square wave chan channels, which is S, L, and R. Um, but you can use it to get some very interesting sounds. The pitch also controls the filter cutoff. So you can hear it moving very slowly, moving more quickly. Um, I'm just going to put a few different ideas together to show you um, how versatile the noise channel can be. Um, let's get rid of these sounds for the moment. I'm just going to move to my R channel and make a quick kick drum. I don't know why, but I always put my kick drums in R. And This is just to give us a little bit of context for the rhythm that we're going to make with the noise. Basic kick drum. So, let's switch to the noise channel. Um, if we just throw down a couple of notes on the offbeats, this kind of fairly simple hi-hat sound, I guess. Um, let's try making this a little bit louder and a little bit shorter. So press select, hold down A, up a couple of times. 
write a couple of times. Um, one thing that I quite like to do, um, press B, let's copy this one by pressing A, move up one. Um, if you press start here, you've reversed the envelope which gives you a kind of backwards sucking sound. It's a sucking sound that sounds cool, <laughs> if you want to look at it that way. But it gives you quite a nice groove to it. If you can hear that, it makes things kind of step along quite nicely. Let's see if we can make something a little bit like a snare drum. Let's take this sound here, put it over here. We'll make it a little bit longer. I think that's a little too high for a snare drum at the moment, so let's press select, move to the kind of filter section. Let's move the cutoff down a little bit, let's make it a little bit lower. I think that works fairly nicely as a snare drum, so let's put another one maybe up here. That's not so great. Um, kind of an interesting sound, I guess. Um, let's see if we can get another couple of interesting percussive sounds. Let's mess with the LFO in a little bit. So, um, let's change this to LFO mode. Um, this sounds also a little bit too short, perhaps, so let's make it a little bit longer. Sorry, what I did there, I just went to the pitch envelope. Sorry, I keep saying pitch envelope. Amplitude envelope made it a little bit longer. Um, let's make it just a little quieter. Um, and let's change that to a bandpass filter. So, as you can see, that's only three different noise channels. Um, let's copy our hi-hat sound and put that in a little bit more. Um, as you can see, that's only two or three different noise channel um, sounds, but there's quite a lot of variation in the rhythm there, and you can obviously get quite a lot out of it. Um, one more thing that I will maybe put in here, seeing as we're talking about rhythm. Um, oh, actually, I'll just show you. Most of these sounds are not having the actual filter sound change much, um, only the very, very last one. Um, the notes are all the same. Oh, sorry, I have to switch to our channel. Sorry, back to the noise channel. Um, the notes, as you say, are basically all the same. But the envelopes controlling the amplitude are a little bit different. One thing that you can do that we haven't looked at yet on the panning, um, you can move this up or down to delay the notes to give things a little bit of an extra swing. Um, this sound at the end is pretty distinctive. So if you move over it, hold down B, press left and right, that will control the panning. Um, if you press up, this will delay the note, which gives things perhaps a little bit more of a swing. So we can delay a couple of notes. This will change things just a little bit. Um, if you want to, something else that you can do with the delay, if you press start, no, it's a little difficult to hear on that sound. Um, yeah, if you press start, you will play the original sound and the delayed sound at the same time. So this is only the delayed sound. This is the sound with no delay on it. Um, so if you press start, you won't actually see anything initially. But as you move up, you can hear the original sound and the delayed sound both playing. Um, which can give you a lot more groove. Um, I've never actually tried this before. I wonder what happens when you try and pan this. Ah, you can pan it as well, which is kind of cool. Um, so, I learned something about the noise channel today. Um, I hope you did as well. Um, I think that kind of wraps up for the noise channel. So, we've looked at a lot of the kind of basic stuff that you can do with regards to making sounds and saving things. Actually, let's save this because I quite like it. Press select, twice, move to the up and down arrow, press B, let's save this in number two, so hold B, press down, um, let's save our little kick drums as well, and this time we have a LSD, uh, sorry, a nano loop 2.3 tune from the 10 thank you very much.